What is up YouTube? Luca here with a PvE tank build. Let's get straight to the build. I'm on four pieces heavy armor and one piece medium armor. Just because I don't have heavy Alexio and 21 constitution is pretty nice. Front bar the tank sword from Destiny, the level 55 dungeon. Then a legendary shield here, pretty nice. And on the back bar, just a hatchet with a Canadian gem. Here we have a Canadian 5, so 300% more threat or aggro. This one just a tier 3, not really needed a tier 5 here. Then on the jewelry, full constitution, as buff food, party meal, the level 61. Pretty nice for HP region and it sticks with this one here which gives 20 constitution. The better one gives 30 constitution if I remember correctly. But this one is more than enough to be honest. As potions, most of the time the powerful health potions. If I'm really in trouble I also use level 61 the infused health potions. Sometimes the region potions here which has another cooldown so you can use the health potion and the region potion at the same time. In terms of gems, on the sword, like I said before, it can have a 5 gem and on the hatchet it can have a 3 gem. We can also put a 5 here but 500% more threat is more than enough. I don't have any gems on the armor to be honest, not really needed until I don't have the legendary level 61. But if you want, you can put some diamonds here for physical and elemental absorption or just full onyx for physical absorption. Like here, this one, which gives 2.5% physical damage absorption. And the diamond one, 1.9 and almost 1% elemental damage absorption. Pretty nice, but like I said, not really needed for uh, the level 55 dungeons and the other ones. I'm still trying to get the materials for the level 60 for the two level 60 dungeons. I hope I have some luck and I can tank both dungeons soon so I can show you maybe a couple of legendary heavy armor pieces or maybe legendary weapons. We will see. Quick look on the skills. Let's start with sword and shield. On the left tree sword master I use Willing Blade. It's an EOE skill. It deals a pretty good amount of damage, but I mainly use it for this juicy debuff here, Rent, which decreases the target's armor by 5%. The duration is pretty long, 10 seconds, and it's EOE. Then this passive here to reduce the cooldown on the ability for each enemy hit. So if I have 6 or 7 targets on me and if I use Whirling Blade then I sometimes can spam it basically after. So it's pretty nice this passive here. Then this passive which gives a slow after, we, after the final light attack. Then counter attack when you block an attack in a stack of M power granting a 3 damage increase for 5 seconds and it can stack up to 5 times so 15% more damage which is pretty nice as tank to keep up the aggro. Next passive position for more crit chance. Mobility pretty nice move 33% faster while blocking. Positioning movement is really important as tank so an important passive here. Importantness the 10% more damage to slowed foes. Thanks to this passive here, we slow after the final light attack. So good synergy here with those two passives. Then confidence, while health is full, deal 15% damage. Not that good to be honest, but I put all those points on the left tree only because of this overpowered passive. While holding a sword, all her group members' damage is increased by 10%. That's a perma buff, but keep in mind it's only active on your sword and board, but honestly it's so strong. I don't know why 
A lot of tanks prefer this one here. Okay, 30% damage reduction is pretty strong. But 10% flat damage for the entire group is, in my opinion, way stronger. Depends on the dungeon. I didn't tank the level 60 plus dungeons yet. Maybe I need this one then. I have to see. But for now, this passive here is OP as fuck. Now let's take a look on the right tree, defender, sturdy shield, grants more armor, 50%, pretty nice. Sturdy grip, reduce the stamina damage by 15%, but only on melee attacks. Then elemental resistance, reduce damage from all magical types by 10%. Then defensive training, when you block and take in 10% 45 for 5 seconds. So we uh, take 10% less damage. Next passive, Invigorating Bulwark. Gain 15 stamina when hitting a target with Shield Bash or Shield Rush. It's more a filler passive for this one. Recuperation, all incoming healing and regeneration is increased by 10%. Super powerful passive here, definitely needed. Our active skills. Defiant Stance for 8 seconds, reduce the incoming base damage from attackers by 30% and it's our AOE Taunt, really important, for 6 seconds with an 8 meter range. But keep in mind you need the Canadian gem slotted, otherwise it will not taunt the enemies. Our next taunt, Shield Bash. It's a small front AOE taunt, more a single target taunt, deals 50% weapon damage, so not a big deal to be honest. And it also interrupts some uh, channel abilities, pretty interesting. Next weapon is our headshot on the back bar. We have Berserk here, our third taunt, it's also an AOE taunt like Defiant Stance, the range is huge, also 8 meter. And the taunt goes for 8 seconds, pretty nice. On top of that, if we use Berserk, we increase our movement speed by 20% and we heal every 4 seconds for 30% of our max HP, pretty damn strong. On top of that, Twigging Berserk removes all CCs, all stuns, slows and rules. And the last passive here, while in Berserk your attacks are uninterruptible, pretty nice. Then the last passive here, Defy Death, definitely needed when you receive lethal damage, so if you have for example uh, 50 HP or less than 50 HP you gain immortality for 3 seconds, the cooldown is huge, 25, uh, 75 seconds, but it can save your ass basically. I will definitely skill this one here, if I have enough skill points. I mainly use the headshot only because of Berserk to be honest, for the extra AOE taunt. I most of the time just activate Berserk for the AOE taunt and then I bar swap immunity to my sword and board. I don't really stand often uh, long enough on my headshot bar. As you can see I only have two active skills, the other ones are kinda useless as tank. Only this one, Infected Throw, Throw and Exit deals 150% damage and triggers Disease and Weakens for 5 seconds. The disease reduces target's healing by 30%. Some bosses or even trash mobs, they just use potions or heal themselves, so pretty nice. And the second one, Weak reduce target's damage by 10%. 10% damage reduction, for example on some bosses which deals 5-6 damage light attacks, pretty damn strong. And the duration of 5 seconds, this uh, passive here increases the debuffs to 8 seconds if the target is below 30%. And the second passive here, pretty, pretty cool, it creates a 3 meter disease AOE, so you actually don't have to hit the target, you can just put it nearby and you can infect more targets with this passive here. So it's an AOE debuff then. I'll be honest with you, the headshot bars, like I said before, only for Berserker for the uh, AOE taunt. 
and for infected throw. All the passives here are kinda useless except of this one that I don't even have um, as tank. You can of course also use it for a little bit of damage input but most of the time if you have one, two, three adds on you plus boss you have to stand on the sword and board um, bar also because of the 10% extra damage for your group mates. Alternative you could even go with the Warhammer instead of the Hatchet. We have Shockwave which is an EOE stun and EOE taunt. As you can see 6 seconds and it also applies Weaken which decreases the target's armor by 10%. Also pretty nice but I personally prefer Berserk just because of this huge 8 meter range so you just stand in the middle of a a mob group for example, press berserk, bar swap immediately to sort of board and you have all mobs on you, all the argo just by pressing one button. Attribute points, I am on 322 constitution and almost 100 strength. You can also put all your points on constitution or a little bit more in strength for the argo but I prefer more in constitution just for the max HP here. The first stage of constitution, so if you have 50 points in it, all health consumables 20% stronger, cool. Second one, so if you have 100 points in it, increase your max health by 10% and your physical armor, so a must have at 150 points in constitution, 10% of crit damage taken, that's more for PvP. With 200, increase the armor again. 20% at 250 points, an 80% damage reduction buff when you have uh, when you are full health. But the cooldown is 60 seconds, but also pretty nice. Last but not least, 20% duration of uh, stun slows and roots on top of that. So must have, I would say, uh, 200 constitution points. So those 100 points here, you can also put them on strength or even on focus with restoration stuff. What you prefer more, doesn't matter to be honest. That's it with my PvE tank build showcase. If you have some questions, type it in the comment section below. I will try to answer them as fast as possible. I will also leave you some gameplay footage in the description below. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you hopefully in the next video. Ciao!